This video is an addendum to the video MVC3 Razor Login Example Part 5 of 5. More specifically, it's a, I'm making this video in response to a suggestion, or a request I should say, that, uh, or a suggestion, that says that uh, you forgot the Part 6 database connection to SQL Server 2008. We hope you also upload that part. I really never intended these videos to be seen by anybody other than myself, or actually I should say be used by anybody else than myself. So I apologize that, that I did not include a database, include how to connect to the database in this part five of five example. Well, this video hopefully will cover that um, to your satisfaction. That being said though, uh, the database topic is really broad and, and so you should uh, you should really understand all of the database implications if you're going to go live with a MVC site um, because this example that I'm going to show you is going to be really quick, dirty, and simple. We're, what we're going to do is make a SQL Express database that has a user record, a username record, and um, instead of having this hard-coded line here, we're going to introduce a database call to check the user entered uh, username and password and we'll just get right to it. I'm going to continue on with the code that we had earlier in the other five videos and I'm going to go to my MVC application 6 uh, project and I'm going to add a ASP.NET folder and specifically I'm going to add the app underscore data folder and from there I'm going to add a uh, SQL Server database so I'm going to select or right click on app data and go to new item and I'm going to select the SQL Server database and um, I'll just keep the default name so Visual Studio is creating that database now and now it's added to <coughs> my uh, solution over here uh, double click on the database and we can see that we have the database in the server explorer here and in the tables area I'm going to add a new table and I will add some columns, user ID, and there will be an int. I'll make this a primary key, and I'll put a username in there, and a password. Make this a auto identity, by the way. Okay, identity specification is true. All right, um, like I said, I, I can't say this enough that this is going to be a very simple example just to maybe food for thought or get you started in some way um, bottom line is we want to just actually call a database instead of having this hard coded uh, hard line code here alright so I'm going to just have a, a database table called user so I'll rename this from table 2 to user and now I'm going to save it and this user table, it just has a user ID, a username and password. Obviously, you're going to want to add a first name and some email and other columns to it. But that's out of the scope of the, uh, this video. Okay, so now from here, I want to add a record. I want to add a user record. I'll do it manually. Show table data. And uh, the username will be, let's see, what was it over here? It's Jed Albao. All right, so we'll just do the same thing. So now we're going to have a record in the user table with a username Jed password Albao. All right, I'm going to close that. So that's, that's our database table there. As you can see, this database called database one has one table called user. And uh, that table has one record. A username of Jed and a password of Albao. Now we want to add the connection string to that database. Now there's many ways to do this, but one way that I seem to like is I, I go back to my server explorer here and I highlight the database. And you can see over here the connection string. I'm going to select all on that and copy it. Now I go to my web config and I'm going to add a connection string connection strings 
and in my connection strings, I'm going to add a connection string. So th this implies that you can add more than one connection string. And by name, I can reference it, reference these connection strings, if I have more than one, uh, by the name that I define here. And this one, I'll just call it my MVC DB connection string. You can name this anything you want. It's an arbitrary name. But the connection string value is critical. So I copied that connection string earlier, a few seconds ago. And I'm going to paste it. So now if we look at the, uh, the value, let me do a little there. Hopefully you can see it better. Um, this value that I just pasted in, remember, came from the server explorer, just so we don't get lost here. And the properties of the database, uh, we can see the connection string. So I just copied that value. And the value that's specified in that uh, property includes the entire full path to uh, the database. And I don't want that. So I'm going to delete all the way up to the app data. And I'm going to put a pipe data directory. So instead of having that full path that goes to the app data folder and to the database, I delete that full the path and replace it with data directory. A data directory is a, a keyword here that by default is the path to this app data folder over here. So that makes it nice so we can easily move this uh, application around from, from machine to machine and we don't have to worry about that long C colon path. This is my connection string that I defined in the web config file of the MVC application. And now within the application, I can reference this connection string that points to this database by this name. Now next what I want to do is create a class that actually uses this database and will validate a username and password. So I'm going to create a new folder in my application my project and I'll call it data access and uh, again this is just arbitrary names you can do whatever you want. Now I'm going to add a class to this I'll call it DAL for data access layer you can name it anything you want, and this is just going to be a class that queries the database. This is where the database topic goes forever. I mean, you can do so many different things in so many different ways to get the same thing done. Again, this is just a simple example. Okay, I'm going to add a static variable, and it's going to be a SQL connection type. I'll call it con for connection and it's going to be a new SQL connection and the SQL connection will be uh, configuration config spell it. okay what you see me doing here is uh, let's see what hold on. I can't type and talk at the same time let's see what was the name of this copy paste it Okay, <clears throat> what I'm doing here is creating a static, uh, static uh, object, which is a SQL connection object. And um, this SQL connection has a parameter that takes a string that defines the path to the database or the connection string to the database. Now, using this connection strings, connection strings property of the configuration manager, I can grab that string. And if you don't know already, the Configuration Manager is a class that allows you to peek inside of the web config file and get uh, different elements out of it or properties. In this case, I want the connection strings. And uh, so I'm specifying the connection string takes a um, index value. And the value in this case is going to be the name, uh, the string name that I specified here. And then I'm going to convert it to a string. Okay, so this is my SQL connection. This is the thing that's going to connect to that database that we put in here. 
Now I'm going to make a static uh, method that just returns true or false and it validates a user. User is valid and it takes in a username or it takes in a string for a username and a string for a password. And uh, let's just get this thing going. Now we're going to create the, the query that does the um, that looks for a username and password in the database. So we're going to select from the user table that we created and where the username equals ticks in here because it's a string and the password equals ticks again equals that all right so we're going to pass in the we're going to pass in the username and the password okay so our SQL query is doing nothing more than selecting all records from the user table where the username is going to equal a username and the password is going to equal a password. And now we're going to <coughs> create a SQL command object. And uh, we're going to use that query as our query and the connection string, or the, con out, con the connection object as our connection. Now we're going to open that connection. We're going to actually execute our query here. SQL data reader. Now let's execute that reader. We're going to execute the reader. This is the this method here that we made, this static method. It does nothing more than look or query the database, specifically the user table, that has a and re returns a record that has a matching username and password. And what this method does is if if that query has rows or if that uh, the data reader has rows in other words a user re record came back because this re the query returned a record then we're setting we're saying that the authentic uh, the user is authenticated if it's uh, if there are no rows then um, the authenticated variable will, will return false all right, so very simple. Wouldn't recommend this exact same type of code in your production, but again, we're just making a simple example here. Now what we need to do is go back to our login controller. And instead of having this uh, silly line of code here, what we're going to do is comment that out. And we're going to go if, if the DAO data access DAO user is valid the model dot username and the model dot password if that returns true then authenticate or set the authentication cookie if it doesn't then we're going to return the error so let's run this cross your fingers hope everything worked right All right so here we have the login a page. See, I entered a record with Jed Alfile. And it worked. So <clears throat> we're now authenticated by using a database uh, record. Now I'll type in a bad value. And it's incorrect. 